Hey guys, welcome to another IndieTips.com tutorial here on Ugly McGregor. Today we're going to look at a principal element of photography and filmmaking alike. It's one of the core components of each ad and it can get very confusing. Today we're going to talk about shutter speed. Shutter speed is the term used to describe the amount of time that each individual frame is exposed for. In filmmaking, the number will always be a fraction of a second, so 1 over 50. That would mean that for 1 50th of a second, that individual frame is being exposed. But what does shutter speed do? Here we can see that our shutter speed is at 1 over 50. And as you increase or decrease the shutter speed, you may notice that it also increases and decreases the exposure. The higher the shutter speed, the less amount of time each frame is being exposed. The lower the shutter speed, the more time the frame is being exposed. However, you may notice a difference in how your footage reacts to different shutter speeds. For example, these two shots were shot at a shutter speed of 1 over 50 and 1 over 200. As the 1 over 200 shutter speed would have decreased the exposure, I have adjusted the ISO to mirror the exposure in the first shot. When comparing at 200%, you may notice some difference in the movement. It's only when we slow down the footage, we can see what's happening. Let's ignore the fact that there's more noise as a result of the increased ISO. At 1 over 50, our subject is blurred. At 1 over 200, we have a nice crisp image. It can come across counterintuitive because 200 is a larger number than 50. And because of this, it would seem like you're exposing your image longer. However, instead of thinking like these numbers in terms of length, Think of them in terms of speed. Going 200 miles per hour is faster than going 50 miles per hour. Another way to remember which speed is faster is to note that the closer your fraction is to 1, example 1 over 24, 1 over 12, 1 over 6, the longer your shot is being exposed for. In real life, things rarely take a second to complete. Moving your arm to catch something that's fallen off the shelf, pulling the trigger down on your Xbox controller to shoot the enemy, jumping over a wall, whatever it may be, usually happens within a fraction of a second. When we look at a moving object, we really see it in two places at once, where it is and where it was a fraction of a second before. This is why images are more blurred with a slower shutter speed, as it's not capturing that moment in film. As a rule of thumb, for smooth cinematic action, the shutter speed should be double your frames per second. For a cinematic look, your frames per second should be set at 23.986. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to call that 24. And your shutter speed will be double, which equates to 1 over 48. However, many mid-range DSLRs and even some high-end DSLRs don't allow for 1 over 48. So 1 50th of a second is just as acceptable. Some DSLRs will give you a whole number instead of a fraction. Keep this in mind that you are still shooting slower than a second. Why do we need to do this? What does this information provide? This is because of the shutter angle. Shutter angle is the term used to describe the speed relative to the frame rate. Camera company Red says, the term is a conceptual relic of rotary shutters, remember that word, where a disc with an angle opening would spin and let in light once per revolution to expose each frame. In layman terms, every time the frame advances, the shutter rotates and exposes that frame. So how do you work with that shutter angle? Here we have a 180 degree shutter, a 90 degree shutter, and a 45 degree shutter based on the rotary shutter design. On an actual film camera, there would be an advancement of frame for each rotation. But again, for simplicity, we're just gonna show one frame. Now each frame is being exposed for a different amount of time. The larger the angle, the slower the shutter speed, the more motion blur. The smaller the angle, the faster the shutter speed, the less motion blur. So we need a shutter to cut off the light while every change of picture is being made and let light through only while the film is standing still. As I mentioned earlier in this video, it was a rule of thumb to have your shutter speed double the value of your frame rate. The question is why? Well, 180 degrees is the most common setting for capturing that cinematic look. Any larger and the motion appears more smeared since the end of the blur in one frame extends closer to the start of the blur in the next frame. Any smaller and the motion appeared stuttered and disjointed since the blur gap increases, causing frames to become more like discrete images. See, the thing is, the term shutter angle doesn't necessarily apply to many current cameras. Say for example, the camera on your iPhone doesn't control shutter in this way, there's no rotary shutter disc. In fact, a lot of DSLRs have this type of shutter, which is a focal plane shutter. All that has happened is that the angle terminology has stayed the same throughout the technology progression. 
it simply describes the appearance of motion blur in video. So how do we work up the math for other angles and shutter speeds which act the generic 180, 1 over 48 of a second? Let's say we want a 45 degree angle to heighten the action and make everything crisp. Remember a smaller angle is a faster shutter speed. Cinematographer Janusz Kaminski used this in Saving Private Ryan to help bring the aesthetic of war to film. So we would take our frame rate, 24 frames per second. Now we need to work out how to get from 360 degrees, which is full exposure of a frame, to 45 degrees. 360 divided by 45 is 8. And we'll take that 8 and times it by our frames per second, which is 24, letting us know that our shutter speed needs to be 1 over 192. In the description below, there's a link where you can download a handy IndieTips.com printout card for all your shutter angle queries. So finally, we know about shutter speed, we know about shutter angle. The most important thing, as always with filmmaking... Well, there are always two things a teacher wants to know about any material. What does it say? And how effectively does it say it? But there's a third thing that applies to a film. How do we use this knowledge to help tell our story? As previously mentioned, Kaminsky used a small shutter angle for a statical look in Saving Private Ryan. In an interview, director Steven Spielberg said, You can also see several explosions, and Janusz came up with the idea of shooting with a shutter open to 45 or 90 degrees, which completely negated any blurring. Often when you see an explosion with a 180 degree shutter, it can be a thing of beauty, but a 45 degree shutter, it looks very frightening. What about the opposite effect? What if we lower our shutter speed and widen the angle? Here we have an effect that looks like the character is currently dazed or experiencing some sort of poison. No need for post-production effects at all. All in camera. So there we have it. You should now understand what shutter speed does, how shutter angle works, and how you can use them to help enhance your story. One final thing, as I mentioned earlier, adjusting the shutter speed will increase or decrease the exposure. If you're filming and you're in a position of needing extra light, I don't recommend adjusting the shutter speed for this as it's going to directly alter the look of your film. Remember to like, subscribe, share, tweet, Put it on Pinterest if that's still a thing. Catch you again. These techniques shouldn't clutter up a film. They should be used only when they make a film a better educational tool. The particular techniques used depend on the subject. No one method will do for all films.